John Wesley never intended Methodism to cause a separation from the Church of England. He believed he was leading a reform and revival movement within the Church. But after the American Revolution, Wesley recognized there had been a permanent rupture between American Methodists and the Church of England. In 1784, Wesley ordained ministers and appointed leaders in the former colonies, allowing the American Methodist Church to become independent. American Anglicans had begun to call themselves Episcopalians, so the new church was called the Methodist Episcopal Church. In the years since, followers of John Wesley have disagreed and divided over issues of theology, polity, and priority. Today, more than 80 denominations consider Wesley their theological forefather. One of the largest ruptures among Methodists in America occurred in the years before the Civil War over the issue of slavery. It would take some 95 years to reunite. Interestingly, Oklahoma Methodists helped lead the way. As an institution, the Methodist Church was always against slavery. John Wesley had personally opposed it, and the discipline prohibited Methodist ministers from owning slaves. But by the mid-19th century, laws in many southern states prohibited the freeing of slaves. Questions arose about how to handle ministers who came into possession of slaves through inheritance or marriage, but by law couldn't free them. In 1844, American Methodists agreed to disagree and adopted a plan of separation whereby 15 Southern conferences broke off to form the Methodist Episcopal Church South, some 15 years before the first shots were fired at Fort Sumter. Oklahoma was still Indian territory then, and Methodist missionary efforts among the tribes were largely sponsored by the Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas conferences, all of which separated to form the Methodist Episcopal Church South. The Conference of Methodist Churches in Oklahoma, known as the Indian Mission Conference, naturally followed. Thus, for several decades, the Methodist influence in Indian Territory was largely Southern Methodist. By the time the Civil War had ended, the Methodist Episcopal Church had been divided North and South for more than 20 years. Although they shared a common theology and a common emphasis on education and social service, differences in polity had developed that would keep the North and South churches from reuniting for another 75 years. The power of bishops, lay representation at annual and general conferences, leadership roles for women, segregation, even whether clergy should be allowed to smoke or grape juice should be mandated at communion. These were all questions of organization and practice over which the two churches differed. In Oklahoma, these polity differences were less important than the need for cooperation at the local church level on the frontier. Years after the Civil War, lands formerly designated for Native American tribes gradually opened for non-Native settlement. Methodists from Northern conferences sent missionaries to Native tribes and established congregations among the new settlers. After the first land run in 1889, several communities found themselves with two Methodist churches, one North, one South, often within blocks of each other. In Norman, both churches were holding services within weeks of the run, and both had built buildings within a year. In Oklahoma City, the Methodist Episcopal Church and the Methodist Episcopal Church South established congregations only a block apart. Those two churches, the predecessors of present-day St. Luke's and First Church, are still less than a mile apart. Stillwater, too, found itself with separate northern and southern congregations only a block apart. Nationally, although still divided, the two Methodist General Conferences began to cooperate more in the early 20th century. They coordinated funding of foreign missionaries and the efforts of their publishing houses. Their members also cooperated on the temperance movement, fighting the corrupting influences of alcohol and gambling. Locally, Oklahoma Methodists began to cooperate in significant ways. In 1901, members of the North and South Annual Conferences in Oklahoma gathered with a special goal in mind, to found a Methodist university. Opened in 1904 as Epworth University, the school now known as Oklahoma City University was originally built, equipped, owned, and operated by both Oklahoma Methodist conferences, North and South. In dozens of smaller and more rural communities, cooperation and coordination became even more intimate. 
Some churches combine special services, like Easter sunrise services or Wednesday evening prayer meetings. Some coordinated local social service efforts and youth activities. Some merged in point of fact by asking one or the other annual conference not to assign them a minister so the community would only have one. And some literally merged, combining in a single building with clergy sharing responsibilities. One of the earliest instances of Methodist merging in Oklahoma took place in Anadarko, where the South Church had been sending missionaries since 1887. By the turn of the century, the North Church also had a congregation on the same block of First Street. After 1917, no more ministers were assigned to Anadarko's Methodist Episcopal Church South, and the congregation joined the Methodist Episcopal Church in its new building at Second and Oklahoma. Out in the Panhandle, St. Paul's Methodist in Boy City was organized in 1908 as a Methodist Episcopal Church South, but reorganized as a North Church in 1920, welcoming all. The frontier town of Weatherford had a Southern Methodist congregation dating back to 1898, and a Northern congregation was organized in 1904. Merger talks between the two began in 1923, and by 1925, the congregations had received permission from both bishops to merge into the existing building of the Northern Congregation, giving Weatherford a single Methodist Episcopal Church. As the formal division between Northern and Southern congregations in Oklahoma began to erode, Oklahomans began to advocate for a national reunification between the Methodist Episcopal Church and the Methodist Episcopal Church South. Bishop E.E. E. Haas of Muskogee was an original member of the Joint Commission on Federation, organized from representatives of both conferences in 1910. Bishop Haas was also one of five Southern bishops appointed to serve on the subsequent Joint Commission on Unification in 1916. This commission hashed out the reorganization plan and compromises that would eventually become the basis for reunifying the North and South churches. In 1925, Oklahoma was one of only nine annual conferences that voted for an early proposed unification plan. Finally, in 1939, a National Methodist Uniting Conference was held in Kansas City. The Methodist Episcopal Church, the Methodist Episcopal Church South, and an earlier offshoot, the Methodist Protestant Church, officially merged to become simply the Methodist Church. For Oklahoma Methodists, the act was largely a formality. Whether for reasons of fraternity, solidarity, or practicality, Oklahoma Methodists had chosen to focus on their similarities rather than their differences many years before. The grassroots efforts in Oklahoma helped demonstrate to American Methodists, North and South, that beyond talk, unification could become a reality.